um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will have difficulties to go through the protocol because from what Gwenolyn said, I've seen there are so many people around. And I've also noted that the whole group comprised of people from Benin, Lesotho, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, Mozambique, Kenya, South Africa, Namibia, Rwanda, France, Canada, Italy, US, Spain. And I can see almost the globe is here. <laughs> so, since the theme of this meeting is integrated HIV and AIDS, food security and nutrition, I think I need to start from somewhere so that you know that we really need to talk to people. I am in Zimbabwe. Moro i magadiko. I am in Zambia. Mashiku keni. So far, as many countries as I can. But should I get more? I will try to cover all the countries. Having said that, on behalf of the office of the president and the cabinet and indeed on my own behalf. And on behalf of the government of Malawi, let me welcome everybody to Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. When you have visited Malawi, we expect you to touch the waters of Lake Malawi, to test the chumbo fish. <laughs> then we are sure you will come back. <laughs> because it is the home. <laughs> Having said that, Malawi, like any other country in the world, especially in the southern part of Africa, has had the high level of levels of HIV and AIDS. And the levels of HIV and AIDS almost paralyzed this country because we reached a stage where we had permanent, I'll put it that way, in courts, food insecurity from 1992 to 2004 up to the early part of 2005. At that time, we relied on food aid. And that mortality was the order of the day. During the same time, I remember in 1997, when the Sadiq gender declaration was adopted, and at that time, Nelson Mandela was the chair. The most, the countries with the highest rates of HIV were six. And among the six, Malawi was one. And these were South Africa, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, and Iguade, including South Africa. At the moment, what I can say is that the 12 countries with the highest HIV rates are still remaining in Southern Africa. At that time, Uganda was the only country which was a foreigner, as far as the Southern the southern countries are concerned. What it meant was that the economy of the country went down badly. In fact, in 2004, 2005, our economy was growing at zero, at almost minus three percent. Officially, it was put at a certain level, but really, it was that bad. From that time, certain 
drastic decisions were made. The first one was to create a department of nutrition, HIV and AIDS. The second one was to reintroduce agriculture subsidies. And the third one was at whatever cost, we must provide free air service. The three decisions have made drastic changes. First and foremost, every hour you were in Malawi in 2004, 10 Malawians were dying of AIDS related conditions. Today, as I address you, that figure has dropped to two per hour. So you can imagine what can be done. The second aspect is that malnutrition was the single most cause of mortality in Malawi. The minute you landed at the airport, you saw so many skeletons moving around. I use the word skeleton deliberately because that's what you noted as soon as you arrived and you would think you are in a severe famine situation. It was the combination of HIV and malnutrition because 75% of the malnourished were HIV positive. And of all the children that went into the nutrition and rehabilitation unit, 54% were HIV positive. The TB patients, 77% were HIV positive, 77, 75% were malnourished. And so when you put all this, it was a jungle in its own. Work had to be done to introduce nutrition support for people living with HIV. And for that to happen, the concern the infected and the affected voiced out saying, we need nutrition support. We can do without your drugs, but we need nutrition support. So we have to find a way of providing it. 